Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Low Carb Revelation. I am Paula, I live a keto lifestyle. Today is March 26th, it is the 26th day of our fitness challenge. For the month of March, I have made a video each day to sort of hold myself accountable and those of you out there who are wanting to do this along with me. It is not too late to start this challenge, by the way. If you have missed this month, all you have to do is just start watching the videos from March 1st and watch the videos in consecutive order. And basically, I'm just doing motivational videos to motivate myself and those of you out there who are doing this along with me to get out and walk, to do some kind of activity, whether it's cardio, weight resistance, stretching, at your level. Um, if you are able to just sit in a chair and do chair stretches, do that. If you're able to walk for 10 minutes, do that. If you're able to push yourself a little further each day, do that. That is what I have found during this challenge. I really started it because I wanted to hold myself accountable. I wanted a way to make myself get up and do it. And if I was doing a daily video, I had to do it. So now, 26 days later, I am so motivated to get up most days and do some kind of workout. Today, it is raining. It is supposed to rain all day today. We are in the springtime of Michigan and we're gonna have some rainy days. So I'm either going to dodge the raindrops and try to catch a walk in when it's not raining or I'm just gonna do some activity in the house. I have felt an increase in my energy levels since I've started doing this. I feel stronger since I've been doing this. The scale is still slow, but I am definitely noticing that my body is changing. I'm definitely losing some inches. My clothes are getting looser on me still. So I know that what I'm doing is working and I'm going to keep it up along with my clean keto way of eating. A week or so ago, I made some mayonnaise and I used raw egg and I had some people that were concerned about the raw egg and you can buy pasteurized eggs. I guess they're harder to find and they're more expensive, but you can find them in certain stores. But I'm going to try to pasteurize my own eggs today. I have watched a couple different videos and there are a couple of different ways that you can pasteurize your eggs yourself. But to pasteurize eggs, you just need to heat them to, I believe it's 140 degrees to kill any bacteria that is in the eggs. They will still be raw in a raw form. They will not be cooked, but they're heated just enough to kill any bacteria. So I have watched a couple of different, different methods. I have seen a method on the stove where you can put the eggs in water and slowly heat them up. And you have to really watch it because you don't want to have boiled eggs. You have to use a thermometer and you have to watch the temperature. And once it gets to that uh, desired temperature, you take the eggs and you put them in ice water to stop the cooking process. And then you have pasteurized eggs. I have also watched a couple of different people do it in the microwave. Serious Keto has a video where he did it in the microwave. I will link the video down in the description. I'll also link the video with the water on the stovetop method. And you can watch those videos to see for yourself how they are pasteurized. I'm gonna try it today. I'm gonna film it and I'll let you know um, how it goes. So I'm gonna do that today in the kitchen. So I'll be back in just a little bit to do that and show you how it turns out. And then I also will be showing you what I'm eating today throughout the day. So I'll see you in just a little bit. I'm gonna pasteurize my eggs. I'm going to do the water method on top of the stove. I will link, as I said, the microwave method down below and the stove method that I've seen. And so you're just gonna need a pot to put your water in. You're gonna put cold water over room temperature eggs. I have four eggs in here because that's how many I wanna do. And so you're just gonna to wanna to bring your water above the eggs about an inch, and you're gonna need a thermometer. I have a little thermometer that I'm gonna stick in here. Now, the instructions specify not to have your thermometer sitting on the bottom of the pan because the bottom of the pan is gonna be hotter than the water. You wanna make sure you're measuring the water. 
the instructions say to bring the temperature to 140. If it goes over 140, I think it's 142, the eggs are gonna start to cook and you don't want that. So you're gonna wanna stand here and watch it. Keep your temperature at 140. You're gonna want to um, turn it down if it gets too hot, too fast. And you also wanna make sure that you heat them to 140, once it gets to 140, for three minutes. And I have read to be safe to go to three and a half minutes. So I'm gonna do three and a half minutes at 140 once it hits 140. You also want to have a bowl of ice water nearby to put the eggs in as soon as they reach the temperature for three and a half minutes so that you can stop the cooking process. So I am just starting this now and I'm going to get my ice water. I went outside and I grabbed Ed's digital thermometer for the griddle and I'm gonna use this instead. And you can see that the temperature is starting to climb. It's at 135.3. And it is starting to go up pretty quickly. So I'm gonna turn it down. The temperature started rising really quickly on me. So I moved it off of the heat. And I am waiting for the timer to stop. I have it set for three minutes and 30 seconds, about 19 seconds. I've been holding it around 140 for three and a half minutes. It was difficult because it was going up and down so quickly, the temperatures. And so I'm starting to think the microwave method would be easier, but we shall see. Okay, that is my timer for three and a half minutes. Kept it right around 140. Now I'm going to remove these eggs and put them in the ice water so that the temperature stops. We wanna stop the cooking process and hopefully I have been successful at pasteurizing my eggs and have made them safer to consume. I'm gonna go ahead and get set up and start making my mayo. Okay, so I have all my ingredients here. I am going to be doubling this recipe. I have a recipe over on my website of how I made this before, but today I'm doubling it so everything is doubled. I am going to break two eggs into here and two egg yolks. So two whole eggs. All right, I get my separating my egg whites over here. I'll keep my egg whites and use them when I scramble my eggs. I'm also going to put in here two teaspoons of Dijon mustard. Two tablespoons of white wine vinegar. and a little bit of salt. Okay, now the trick to this is to drizzle the oil in there a little bit at a time. I have not had success when I dumped my oil in there all at once. I find it works better for me in thickening the mayonnaise when I drizzle a little bit of oil at a time. So I have my immersion blender here. I'm gonna set this down in here and get it going. And then I'm going to start adding my oil. Okay, so I am having technical difficulties today. I had to switch to a bigger container because the double recipe was too much for the little jar that I was using. And my immersion blender just happened to stop working. I have another one and I'm going to continue. I have my first batch of pasteurized mayo. So I just put some mayo that I just made in this bowl and I have a whisk. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this Porking Good Ranch seasoning. This is a very good seasoning and I am just going to put a couple of tablespoons of this into this bowl and hopefully that's all I need. I'm gonna check it out. I've never made it before so I'm just gonna put a couple of palmfuls 
of this into here. A lot of experimenting, so I don't know how this is gonna be. I just thought it would be interesting to try it as a ranch dressing. I'm going to just go ahead and refrigerate this now, and then when it's dinner time, I am going to see how thick it is once it's refrigerated and see if I wanna add some lemon juice or some vinegar to thin it out. And when that time comes, I will let you know. I'll see you then. Okay, so it is time for my first meal today. It is 12, almost 12.40. So I almost made it to one o'clock today, getting closer. Um, I am having some French eggs. When I have them in the refrigerator, I know what I'm gonna be having for breakfast. This is one of my favorite ways to make eggs. I have the recipe over on my website at lowcarbrevelation.com. Yesterday, I made some chaffles with the carnivore crisp chicken breast flour. I wanted to experiment and use it in some chaffles. And so I'm gonna have one of these with some mascarpone espresso flavored cheese. I also have an iced coffee with some element, the chocolate element and some cream. And so I'm gonna go have my first meal. I'll see you in a little bit. Experiencing some high winds today. Hopefully we do not lose power, but I am having a little snack. This is the porking good jalapeno and cheese pork rinds. These are so good. And so I'm just having a few of these right now and some carbonated water. I made some plans before Ed went to work today to make some food out on the griddle, but I don't know if we're going to do that still with these high winds. So I'll let you know when it's dinner time. I'll see you then. It is a quarter to five and we are making dinner and a windstorm is not going to stop my husband from griddling. He's out there right now getting it going. I'm going to step out on the porch in a few minutes and show you what we've got on the griddle. And now I'm gonna show you what I made inside. I just cut up a salad, some romaine lettuce, some green onion, some cucumber, and some little grape tomatoes. And uh, this is my dressing right here that I made today out of the mayo. And I didn't wanna put any kind of vinegars or anything in it. It tasted so good already. And so I used some Fairlife milk, just a little, maybe a tablespoon or so to put into here just to thin it out a little bit. And this I may be experimenting with a little bit more, but it's just thrown together for today. The ranch seasoning has some kind of, um, I don't know if it's paprika or what in there that makes it kind of like an orangey color, but it tastes really good. So I put that on the salad and just mixed it all together. And that's what we're having as our side. And I'm gonna go out to the grill now into the wind and show you what we're making outside. I told them that even a windstorm isn't gonna stop you from griddling. Never. So, I mean, it is super windy out here. What do we have? We got steaks going down. This is um, that tenderloin from Aldi, right? Yeah. The uh, garlic rubbed tenderloin I bought from Aldi. Mushrooms and onions. We're happy, we got some butter coming down for the shrimps. What's in there? I put garlic, parsley, and salt. And whoo, he has some shrimp over here with some Old Bay. It's getting ready to go down too. So <laughs> I'm going back inside. You can I got you. work the magic out here. Okay. Okay, so Ed is out wiping up the grill and this looks fabulous. He ended up cutting up the tenderloin into like little strips because because it was just so windy and it was just working against him. So he needed to cut them up into smaller pieces so that they could um, cook faster. I'm gonna go ahead and try a bite. The steak is delicious. It had a marinade already in it in the package. Got it from Aldi. It is very tender, it's very good. And I have the salad here. Ed's fixing up his plate. He is actually having shrimp along with his steak. I'm just not a seafood person. I wish I was, but I'm just not, so. Could be. <laughs> Salad. Salad, shrimp. I ain't wasting time, I'll see you yeah. guys next time. All right, see you later. Okay, so I am closing out the night with some French press coffee. I'm making this Major Dickinson's blend. This is decaf coffee is really tasty 
So the way I make French press is I heat up my water, this little tea kettle back here that is electric, and it actually has a coffee setting on it. So I fill this up, warm it up to the coffee temperature, pour it into my, this is a really thick walled French press. It keeps the coffee hot for a little while. And I set a timer for four minutes. And then when it's four minutes is up, push the plunger down and you have some really good French press coffee. So that is how we are gonna end the night tonight. We had some really delicious food today. I hope you enjoyed the pasteurizing egg part. I'm just learning that part as well. So I am gonna go for now. I will see you tomorrow. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Have a great night and God bless.